So over the next few days, I'm going to share with you a restoration I'm doing on a W.E. Hill violin at the moment. It's from 1890. So the father of the owner personally travelled from Australia to London to buy it for her. Now as I'm working on it, I'll tell a little bit about the story, firstly of the maker, but then also the story of the violinist, because it's a really interesting story. The instrument hadn't been played for over 50 years, but had been looked after pretty well. So it's not a major restoration. It had like some open spots, it had a minor crack, and then the rest is basically just maintenance that hasn't been done for many years. Hey, welcome back to day five of the Hill Violin Restoration. I found those open spots last time and uh, so now I um, so I glued them overnight and now I've uh, just got to take the clamps off. Got to do a little bit of cleaning and then I'll actually get the first, um, the start of the polishing going. So this is where you're really going to see the instrument transform from looking like an old, old instrument that hasn't been cared for for a while to actually really getting back to its former beauty. Always an exciting day and I've already made the bridge for it the other day as you would have seen so I've got that waiting here um, so I think tomorrow I should be able to get the strings on the violin so super excited about that I also have to do a little bit of retouching in the uh, on this F hole crack here I don't know if you can see it Okay, so I have my different types of varnishes I'm going to use. Uh, this is very, like I'm very careful, I, I mostly will use the original varnish to work with. Um, there'll be a tiny bit of additive varnish just to protect, uh, just a very, very thin protective layer. Um, uh, just to make sure that uh, the instrument stays protected for the next 130 years but you won't even see it it's so thin okay. so this French polishing technique uh, my dad taught it to me I think when I was still at school so that's um, 35 years ago uh, I did a French polishing course that my dad did for a for a few local in hobby violin and guitar makers um, and that's a uh, you know, the first place where I started learning, but uh, really, uh, you know, it took me many years to really kind of get the, the feeling for it. Uh, it's very different than furniture French polishing because, uh, I mean, the, the idea is similar, but you have to, the varnish is so much more precious on violins. Um, you really have to make sure that um, that the varnish, that it's not a too invasive pr procedure. And uh, and if it, you know, when it comes to some of the Italian instruments, especially the 18th century and 17th uh, century and earlier, there's a totally different varnish preservation method uh, that's used. These varnishes that they used are similar to, uh, they, they have a relationship with the Italian varnishes but they they use a lot more resin, so they're a harder, um, they're harder, more yeah, much more hardy sort of a varnish uh, that doesn't wear off quite as easily. So the old um, the old Cremonese varnishes were quite soft and they would would um, wear off quite easily uh, because they had a fairly high oil content, um, usually linseed oil or um, maybe walnut oil at the time. Look at this beautiful back as well, like just look at the flames, it's got these really deep flames. So as I said before, this instrument was brought to Australia in um, 1890, the year it was made, and uh, by uh, um, the family of R.T. Jeffries. Now R.T. Jeffries actually 
had a huge influence on music, on classical music in Queensland. You know, Queensland was a bit of an outpost at the time. You know, it had only been founded. You know, it, it had only been populated really, or, or starting to build since the 1840s, 1850s. So it was a very new place when he moved here in 1871, and it was quite uncultured, I believe. You know, it was a real outpost, a little country town, and uh, there were a few cultured people, but it would have been, you know, would have just, just they would have kind of created this community of uh, of people. So they, um, so he formed a quartet with his three daughters. Uh, Vida and Arena are two of the daughters. So this used to be Arena's violin. I don't know the name of the third daughter who played cello, um, and uh, and they actually were probably one of Australia's very first musical exports. So they would travel like to England and other places to perform as a quartet. So 1890 was the year um, Arena turned 18. She was born um, 72. She was born 1872 just a year after um, her father migrated to Brisbane. So she probably, she may have actually been the first locally born child of his. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and as they got older, they started this quartet. So Artie Jeffries was one of the founding members of the, or possibly even the founder, I'm not quite sure, of the Brisbane Musical Union in the, uh, late 1800s and uh, and being a or possibly early 1900s uh, he was um, but he was like a, a very good violinist at the time so um, he would have played um, and, the, and the, the Brisbane Musical Union used to put together ensembles and he would have been the first violinist um, and then uh, Arena's sister Vida would be the second violinist in that group. So this, this instrument really is part of Brisbane's musical history. I'm sure that Arena would have played violin. She wouldn't have been the concert master, but she would have been one of the first violinists in the, uh, in the orchestra at the time. So this is starting to shake shape a little bit. You can see that uh, it's already um, looking a little bit more shiny. Um, I'm gonna have to do a fair bit more polishing to, uh, to get it working and I also have to very carefully, there's still a few little areas um, of dirt that I have to work with. Um, but I wanted to do some polishing to protect the rest of the varnish um, while I'm cleaning the uh, some of the other dirt off. So it's a very delicate operation. So the uh, some of the varnishes uh, I use in here are just a special combination that protects the instrument very well and doesn't add a thick layer of. Um, of varnish to the instrument also smells really beautiful people often when they get their instrument back from my shop they go Ooh, what's <laughs> what my instrument smells so nice <laughs> and that's kind of that's actually one of the smells I remembered from my uh, my dad's uh, violin workshop uh, when I was a kid just this beautiful smell of varnish, this sort of a sweetish smell just drifting through the whole workshop. So you can see here there's still some marks from the uh, chin rest here and here, so I'll, I'll have to keep working on that a little bit. Uh, there's some varnish worn off here and just through there. I'm not going to do any color restoration on that because that's part of the instrument's story. I did remove the dirt even though that's part of the instrument's story too but I don't really think it's necessary <laughs> keeping that. Um. So 
It's just beautiful working on an instrument where the actual story is known. And this is actually still in the possession of the family that, uh, uh, of a descendant of um, Arena's. Yeah, that's getting it restored at the moment. It really wants the instrument to get a, a new lease of life. Okay, so I'm just going to hang that up for a little bit to, uh, to dry. I've just got to get my retouching colours, brushes. It's going to have to be a very fine brush. I'm definitely going to use my magnet, trusty magnifying glass on this one. Yeah, this I'm going to go with this brush. It's really nice and fine. So first of all, I've got to just color match a little bit. Here we go. Good. Okay, so I'm just going to put a clear varnish over this. So I've done some color Varnish and now there's going to be clear varnish going over the top. While I'm there, I'm going to just do some clear varnish around some of the edges that uh, that we've been having that have been worn off over the years of playing. Better top up the water on my glue. It's getting down a bit, starting to bubble really loudly. Gives the place a bit of charm. Seems like I'm making some kind of weird varnish concoction, but it's just my glue. I do make weird varnish concoctions though. So I do a lot of experimentation with varnish, um, you know, trying to get closer. Firstly, trying to understand the different types of varnishes that have been used over the years. So I try and uh, uh, copy the effect um, of varnishes. So I look up a lot of very old varnish recipes and and copy them. And also some of the latest research that, that's been done. There's um, a lot's been Thanks to chemistry now, there, a lot can be proven about some of the old varnishes and what was in them. Uh, so it's not as much of a mystery. And no, the secret is not in the varnish. I know people used to say that, that, you know, the secret is of, of the good sound was in the varnish. But that has definitely been disproven. The secret is in understanding the acoustics of an instrument and making them in an acoustically optimal way so that you can have the biggest kind of sound and and the really good instruments might not necessarily sound loud under the ear where you're playing but they will um, sound quite loud in a um, large hall um, so they, they can sound quiet where you're playing but they will like break right through towards the end of a filled hall and they will play they'll make a sound that actually carries over the orchestra i think we might have a fairly good chance with this instrument i, I don't think i mean she played second violin um but i well i think she played second violin who played viola i have no idea Hills and Sons, at the time this instrument was made, they were in 38 New Bond Street. Uh, they only stayed at that premises for seven years all up, and then they moved up the road to their longer term premises. Um, the building they're in now is right next door to where Louis Vuitton is, Sotheby's, and you know, a lot of upmarket labels. So. Uh, you know, it's a very classy street, so it would have been an amazing uh, experience when they came there in 1890, you know, from little little Brisbane, which, you know, I mean, it was a nice town, had nice shops, but, uh, you know, obviously it was nothing like the metropolitan London of the time. I'm 
just looking at the places where the varnish is worn and I'm just uh, just adding little bits of varnish. I still have to do a bit of work on the scroll. There's still some dirt build up here, but I want to do it carefully because uh, some of the dirt's mixed in with the varnish and I don't really want to wear off the, the, uh, the varnish in the same at the same time. It's very important. All right, I'm going to let this dry till after lunch now and I'll come back after lunch and do a little bit more work. Okay, uh, it's evening now. Um, I finally got back to work uh, on the violin. I had some other jobs to do. I One of my beautiful Ziado violins that I'm currently setting up and so I had to finish the, the planing the fingerboard on that one. Uh, it's going to get a polish and everything. It's really beautiful. It really sounds like a master instrument. Uh, absolutely stunning. Um, so I'm in the process of setting that up in the, at the moment. And uh, yeah, also had a few other things to finish. But anyway, I'm back working on the Hill Violin. Found out so much more about the instrument or the history of the family. It's so cool. They really did play a major part in music in, in Queensland. They definitely founded the first um, orchestra that we ever had here in Queensland, in Brisbane. So I've done a bit of sanding, some very gentle sanding in a couple of places. So once I, uh, it has, I use extremely fine sandpaper. It's like um, thousand grade or, yeah, or even finer. Uh, just to very gently get the top of some of the varnish off so when I so when I do the retouching so where I add the new varnish it gets quite uneven and uh, so I have to very carefully sand that just the uneven bits and then the rest I polish in the new varnish and the old varnish just blend in together um, but it's starting to really shine up now you can I don't know if you can see, but this is this is really starting to get beautiful. Um, now this is a really delicate operation uh, because I'm dissolving very very top layer. Um, if I do this wrongly, if I stop at any point, the whole cloth will literally just get stuck to the varnish. So I'm forever moving. I'm using a very neutral paraffin oil to um, so that the cloth doesn't stick. And then I uh, very gently polish. So it's gonna be a bit of a process, but I'm getting closer to finishing, as you can see, by the way the instrument is getting uh, a little bit more shiny. This is the top plate. So I'm adding that tiny bit of varnish. It's an actual, it's a special varnish, varnish mix that I do. Um, it blends in very well with some of the original varnishes and uh, kind of interferes the least possible with the original varnish. That's always very important. Uh, the original varnish of an older instrument is really sacred. Don't try this at home <laughs> or in a park. Okay, so the varnish is getting a bit sticky now, so I better let it dry for a while. Then I'm going to do a little bit more sanding and then it's up to the uh, time for the final polish. Then I'm going to leave it dry overnight. Okay, I'm just doing a little bit more very, very fine sanding here. It's 
just some of the areas where I uh, added varnish. It's been drying for a little while, so I'm just getting back into it. It's just little bumps where I uh, where we uh, did some extra retouching and things like that. So I'm just uh, making sure they go on before I polish. The area in here was super, super dirty. So obviously the person like touched the scroll like this when they were tuning. I will be using the original pegs that I have, like they're uh, um, beautiful rosewood pegs. I, I'm fairly certain that they are actually the original pegs. They were quite popular at the time. And uh, so I'm fairly certain they are actually 130 years old. Okay, we'll polish over it again. Getting pretty happy with this. Um, So I'm about to put it aside and let it dry overnight and then tomorrow I'll put on the strings. So here we go, I'm getting very close to finishing it. Uh, finishing the polish and uh, then tomorrow I will do a little bit of work on the pegs. I also still have to adjust, uh, when I plant the fingerboard I um, uh, Obviously the nut ends up being too high, so I'll be adjusting that and then uh, I've already made the bridge So uh, I'm also making the sound post uh, Tomorrow it does have the original sound post, but it's pretty bad and uh, Tomorrow I'll get to actually play the first few notes. So that's super exciting Really looking forward to actually hearing this sound uh, for the first time in close to 50 years.